Welcome to the Joy of Music. My name is Diane Bish, and I would like to invite you to join me for a musical visit to Colonial Williamsburg in Virginia, a journey into America's past. Thank you for joining us. A visit to Colonial Williamsburg is a rendezvous with an important chapter of America's history. The experience includes encounters with great deeds of patriot leaders, as well as with daily activities of the less well-known people who also lived in the 18th century Williamsburg. People from all walks of life created the now famous Virginia colony known as Colonial Williamsburg. to Williamsburg reminds us of our past leaders and rich heritage, but also of our nation's spiritual establishment and dependence upon God for true freedom, leadership, and stability. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. The George Wythe House was the home of one of the most distinguished Americans of his era. George Wythe's career as a lawyer, Burgess and clerk of the House of Burgesses, signer of the Declaration of Independence, framer of the U.S. Constitution, professor of law and judge, spanned more than 50 years of the most significant years of the nation's history. George Wythe probably did more than any other man to shape the ideas of Thomas Jefferson. The George Wythe House was also the headquarters of General Washington before the siege of Yorktown. <laughs> Our journey into America's past included a visit with several men of old who played a significant role in the early years of this country. George Wythe shared his insight 
on the political, social, and religious life of early Williamsburg. It will be seven years now I've been serving as clerk to the House of Burgesses. Um, that means that I keep the records of the proceedings of our representative house and advise from time to time as occasion may arise. I understand that you're, you are a mentor and a friend of Thomas Jefferson. Yes, Mr. Jefferson and I have been well acquainted for some 14 years now and have remained friends through all that time. Uh, he was a lawyer for a number of years but resigned from the law just this year. Uh, partly out of disgust at not being able to collect his fees. May I ask you, Mr. With, where you attend church? Uh, next door at Bruton Parish. What does worship mean to you in the Bruton Parish Church? Is it a weekly or more than once <clears> a week? <throat> we generally attend divine services weekly, though occasionally we omit. I must say that we have less excuse than some others might have. <laughs> being near enough the church house that we can easily step next door. Uh, to me, worship is an acknowledgement of the divine creator of this eternal frame, or no, I shouldn't say eternal frame, but this great frame in which we find ourselves fixed. And it seems to me that it is important for us to recognize that connection with that which is eternal. Our journey continues as we visit with John Randolph, Jr., who told us about his life in Williamsburg and his role as the King's Attorney General. It is my responsibility to prosecute in the High Court for the King, as did my brother for 22 years before me, as did our father for a space, as did our grandfather. The, uh, the Randolphs have been in the first rank of offices in Virginia for generations. You obviously chose to live here in Williamsburg. What is special about it? Well, most everything, Mr. See, you just look around you in any season of the year, it, it is so very colorful. Now, the approaching Christmas tide, that is indeed a season of color. But, but just all around, the, the catalpa trees, the red oaks, scarlet oaks, it is alive with color in the spring with the dogwoods. It, it is, I think there is no city in America which exceeds Williamsburg, though, of course, there are several that far exceed her in number of souls. Uh, it, it is a grand place to be. At least it has been.
sign in front of the Market Square Tavern says, the best accommodations. Well, we certainly liked the accommodations because this was our home during our stay here in Williamsburg. The Market Square Tavern has been an inn for over 200 years, and its most famous guest was Thomas Jefferson, who stayed here while he was studying law here in Williamsburg. We also had a conversation with Thomas Jefferson in the Market Square Tavern. It is my pleasure today to welcome to the Joy of Music Thomas Jefferson, the most important resident of Williamsburg. Welcome, Mr. Jefferson. Well, I'm pleased to be here, Ms. Bish. I understand, Mr. Jefferson, that you are a violinist. Well, yes, indeed. I delight in music. I consider it a passion of my soul. And that you uh, join other people here, musicians to play in the governor's palace. Oh yes, from a very early age, we would all gather in the palace. Uh, Mr. Small on his violin, of course, Governor Falk here on the spinet, and uh, Mr. Wythe on the oboe, and then I would as well join our parte quare, as we would call it, with my violin. Do you consider yourself an amateur or a professional? Well, I would consider indeed that any gentleman would desire to be an amateur, uh, a dilettante, if you will, in the, the enjoyment of music. And how did it come about that you were the writer of the Declaration of Independence? Well, uh, of course, I was uh, on a committee of five gentlemen appointed by President Hancock uh, at the Congress in Philadelphia. And, uh, well, the other gentlemen had somewhat uh, personal disagreements in reference to writing it themselves. Uh, Dr. Franklin, of course, felt he was too old to write the document. Uh, Mr. Sherman of Connecticut uh, did not feel he was formally schooled or well-educated enough to, to write it. Mr. Livingston uh, desired to return to the port of New York City uh, as his wife had given birth to a, a baby boy. And, uh, well, Mr. Adams was looked upon as somewhat obnoxious, and though he desired to write it, uh, no one perhaps would have accepted his writing, so it, it fell to me. How is it that you came to run for president? Were you drafted, uh, so to speak, or did you choose to do so? Well, yes, Ms. Bish, you are correct. I was more or less drafted. Uh, they asked me if I would stand for election, and uh, as indeed, after 12 years of federalism, there was a, a quite the opposition faction, uh, and very much in my interest, uh, for the common man, I did then accept to stand for the presidency.
I presume, Mr. Jefferson, that even though your profession was law, that music was a very wonderful pastime for you. Oh, indeed, it uh, has always been more than a, a pastime. I consider it the sustenance uh, uh, of the health of my soul, uh, one that indeed uh, never allows for a, for a moment of ennui, as the French say. Uh, one that always enlivens with happiness. It has certainly been a pleasure, Mr. Jefferson, to have you on The Joy of Music today. And we wish you well in your activities. And uh, thank you for being here. Well, it's certainly my pleasure, Ms. Bish. And uh, indeed, uh, it is a pleasure always to meet a lovely young lady interested in music. Good day. It was not unusual at all to walk into a tavern or alehouse and find instruments which the customers use to entertain themselves. On the joy of music today, we hear balladeers as they perform their charming music at the Tuning's Tavern.
The Bruton Parish Church is one of the landmarks of Colonial Williamsburg. Formed in 1674, when several other parishes merged, the church has brought faith and inspiration to people of every walk of life through the years. Williamsburg's most famous tavern in the 18th century, the Raleigh, was the center of social, political, and business activities. Public receptions and balls were common. The Phi Beta Kappa Society, founded in Williamsburg in 1776, sometimes met here. Patriots also met here to voice their opposition to the policies of the British Crown. Important meetings at the Raleigh foreshadowed American independence. of Burgesses and the Council, the two houses of the legislature in Colonial Virginia, met at the Capitol, which has been rebuilt on its original foundation. Patrick Henry's fiery 1765 Caesar Brutus speech, the May 15, 1776 Resolution for Independence, and the introduction of Thomas Jefferson's bill for religious freedom occurred on this site. God of our fathers, whose almighty hand leads forth in beauty all the starry band of shining worlds in splendor through the skies, our grateful songs before thy throne arise. Thy love divine hath led us in the past. In this free land by thee our lot is cast. Be thou our ruler, guardian, guide and stay, thy word our law, thy paths our chosen way.
Today, the joy of music has come to you from Colonial Williamsburg in Virginia, a journey into America's past. We thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again next week on The Joy of Music. like to purchase today's program or any program in our library of over 400 videos and CDs from the great organs and historic churches of the world, please call 1-800-933-4844. We hope to hear from you.